I have no tolerance for people of non-traditional sexual orientation, especially when they express their ideas freely in front of children. I have a question, for what reason do they exist? And why is their number increasing so rapidly? After all, nature predetermined that man plus woman equals harmony and procreation. I understand that there may be a small percentage of system failures. But there are so many people who openly reveal their non-traditional orientation. Look, Svetlana, this phenomenon contains several hidden pitfalls, let's call them that way. The first pitfall is that our own uniqueness, the desire to manifest our own uniqueness, is the opposite side of traditionality. In ancient times, it was believed that homosexual tendencies or non-traditional orientation as it's called today, are attributed to people who can combine within themselves both male and female characteristics, similar to hermaphrodites or androgynes, as they were later called by philosophers. I have a video in that regard on my YouTube channel. If you're interested, please find that video and watch it. I unpack exactly this aspect of androgyny in more detail there. To be precise, these people are close to a deity. Not without reason, in the very archaic pagan era, it was customary for high priests to practice cross-dressing. Women dressed in male clothing and men dressed in female clothing to express their androgynous qualities, which were a mandatory condition of connection with a deity, according to those traditions and rules. Today, people who express themselves this way, as a rule, belong to creative fields and the arts. And the arts, in their understanding, is a certain manifestation of one's self in non-traditional ways. No wonder that they try to demonstrate their personal uniqueness to stand out from the crowd of normies, as they call it. And all these are the manifestations of liberal ideas. In contrast to conservatism, Liberalism can make any manifestation stand out, become phenomenal and vivid regardless of whether it's actually phenomenal or not. Anything goes. For example, based on photos of one unfortunate child, they can create an entire culture, a whole movement for the protection of that unfortunate child while completely ignoring the fact that a huge number of other unfortunate children, in exactly the same circumstances, are going unnoticed by them. That is the essence of liberalism. We take something small and make it into something great, and this something great becomes a universal idea. They decided to do the same with this phenomenon, which goes against biology, and that is the second pitfall. Manifestation is a convenient tool, a very convenient tool, in order for a tool to reveal itself in such a way, it must be fashionable. And how can we make it fashionable? For this, we need to open some Overton windows, as they say now. Thus, some notable people must make coming outs to show that the tradition now supports these people to hold government positions, and so forth, to show that they are being helped, that they receive certain social benefits. This is only the mirror of liberalism. This doesn't actually reflect its founding idea, not at all. It is rather an attempt to oppose the position of conservatism. The conservative position insists on the opposite principle that there is nature and nature is above all. We don't go against nature, and those who go against nature are just insane, this is the other extreme. And, of course, all those insane people should be put in an appropriate hospital, and others, we surely support them. Liberals have it the other way around. These two extremes always become very problematic and conflictual when the system begins to die. The same could be observed in many other previous civilizations. The Greek civilization before its death was similarly divided into conservatives and liberals, just like ours. 
The Roman civilization did the same not long before its death. So, actually, the current Judeo-Christian civilization has not invented the wheel here. Such a phenomenon is rather an indicator than the cause, an indicator of the fact that a system has reached its end. However, this doesn't mean that this system really praises people of non-traditional sexual orientation as something outstanding. They do not know the sacred meaning of androgyny and do not necessarily need to know that. And trust me, as soon as the age turns, the same people will rip their rainbow community apart with the same fervor they are now lifting them up to the top of Olympus. So your dislike of them just shows that you are a conservative. Your unacceptability says that you are extremely conservative. Think back to the first half of our meeting. Actually, that's why I spend so much time on it so you could ask yourself these questions. Are you sure that this extreme is genuinely yours? Are you absolutely sure that it comes from you, and that the value that states I'm in favor of nature and against everything else is truly yours? The fact that they impose their ideas on children has the same reason, they need as many adepts as possible, and preferably young, and preferably with a non-conservative mindset. What could be better than children? Only monkeys, but monkeys would hardly understand them since they always follow their nature. They want a boy, they take a boy. They want a girl, they take a girl, independent of their own gender, because that is what animals actually do. Ask yourself this question. Anything that you possess now, including your preferences or hatreds, should be taken up by you, colleagues, with heightened scrutiny. Always ask yourself the question, is this mine or not? This feeling that I currently have, the one that has manifested, the one that got captured within me, as this idea that manifested out of air, in my subtle body, where is it? I listen to myself, yes, it's in the astral body. Well, hello there, astral body, you become active, so come on and tell me what emotion are you feeling right now. Hate? Great. And we don't ask silly questions like, is this your emotion of hate? Of course, it is yours if you feel it. We ask ourselves something else, is the idea that I hate those people right for me or not? Is it really mine? And keep asking yourself these questions. Is it truly mine? Am I sure this is what I think? Am I actually ready to fight this hated phenomenon until the very end? What is it about this phenomenon that concerns me the most, the fact that it exists in the world or the fact that they are trying to infiltrate my family? And you might find that you are annoyed not by the fact that they exist, but by the fact that they're trying to get into your family to gain authority over your children. So maybe that's the actual problem? Is your fear of losing your authority over children the real problem? Are you afraid that you won't win this competition in the eyes of your own child? Maybe you need to look at the situation this way and then come to conclusions, Maybe such an answer would be more sincere than saying that you are bothered by the fact that these extraordinary creatures, who better not be mentioned, exist in this world. They have always existed. In ancient Greece, for example, or in the Roman army, where it was considered a necessary condition for passing through warriorhood, such was the tradition. In certain high-level educational institutions, for example, in England or the United States, it's mandatory to undergo a homosexual initiation rite, otherwise, you just won't belong to that society. And not because they videotape it for the purpose of blackmail. What kind of blackmail is this if every second, if not every person is involved in it? That's not blackmail. There's something else behind this rite. Try to dig into this issue by following the thread of your own hatred. Your emotion is the only reliable thing for you at the moment, because everything else may not be true. That will be my answer to your question, colleague.